Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can, just so we can get out there a little bit more. Now, with that being said, welcome to the video. Today was going to be a, a little bit of a shorter video. I'm just discussing the KD and Jalen Brown stuff. I'm here to tell you the reasons why the Celtics should be hesitant on the KD trade. Now, when the reports first came out, I was bullish on KD trade. I was like, you know, Brown has a year left on his contract. Maybe JB doesn't really want to stay here. You know, he's always been the two or the three or the four. When he was younger, he was a four. Now he's the two. Tatum gets the majority of the praise. Getting a guy like KD, who was, to me, a top five skill player of all time. Probably the best ever. Like, there hasn't been an NBA player with the combination of size and skill that KD has. And still at 33 years old, He's still a 27 point scorer easily. And he's a guy whose playmaking has improved over the years. Um, he's had some good defensive years. Those might be behind him though, as we talk now, but the on court isn't the issue with a KD trade. If there's an on court issue, the only thing is time and age. Jalen Brown's significantly younger. You keep Jalen Brown, you sign him and you have Tatum, your window is significantly larger than when you have KD here. And I think the trade-off, you you never know. If we have two years of, of peak KD left and we win two championships, I would say it's worth it. But you just never know. But the real issue with trading with KD is the off-course stuff. And you don't know what you can do to keep him happy he's with okc all they needed was a piece here and a piece there and they were competing i mean they were literally competing with the warriors and they blew a 3-1 lead all that's not on kd some of that is on the youth of russell westbrook and him not being able to control the game at that at that point of his career but kd leaves that situation goes to the warriors People still aren't over that. I'm over it, but it was a weak move. To me, it was a weak move. It completely flustered the balance of the league, which at that time was at a good state. You know, you had stars on every team. You didn't have three stars on every team, but you had a star here, maybe two stars there, and then Miami, of course. He went there to win, get, got two championships. Draymond screamed at him. Some other stuff happened in between that. Draymond not apologizing to KD, stuff like that. And KD leaves. You leave the best roster construction, the best management construction. A team that would, would do whatever to win. Money-wise, roster-wise. He leaves the perfect situation. Then he goes to Brooklyn. Okay, this is my point. We don't know what, what makes him happy. Obviously, it's not winning. Because if he would have stayed in Golden State, they would still be winning. Despite the injuries to Curry and all that stuff, they would have came back in the playoffs and they would have won a championship. They would have won five, at least five, at the minimum five. That happens. So he leaves that situation. Okay. Now, after the two championships, I'm guessing now the point is his legacy. People are saying, oh, those championships don't matter because you was with the Warriors, even though he was the best player on the team. People are saying, oh, those championships don't matter. It's the Warriors. You join a, a 73 and 9 team cool now he goes to the nets but he comes with Kyrie Irving then KD is like y'all have to sign DeAndre Jordan because that's my boy it makes no sense to me you have Jared Allen that makes no sense to me KD comes in here plays GM KD has the owner fire Kenny Agassin brings in Steve Nash him and Kyrie like oh we don't really need a coach all we need is somebody to you need a coach in basketball. I don't. Give, I don't care who you are. You need a coach when shit gets rough. You need a coach, not somebody that's just gonna be the face and say they're the coach, but somebody that actually does coach things, manages egos. That's what they thought Steve Nash was gonna do. But Kenny Agassin is a better coach. But Katie had him fired. Right, the year where Kyrie got hurt against the Bucks and Harden was playing on just one hamstring, Katie literally almost carried them to an Eastern Conference Finals appearance. And if they would have beat the Bucks, they would have beat Atlanta, they would have been right in the Finals. So, I, KD gets no blame there because 
through all the stuff of him going to going to the Warriors, him being hurt, he came back and showed that he was the best player in the world at that time. So he gets no blame for me there. What I do not like what KD did is that he requested a trade, right? And the request he made after requesting a trade of, okay, the only way I stay here is if you fire the coach, Steve Nash, which he brung there, and two, fire the GM, then I'll stay. If you do those two things, I'll stay. KD, you were the GM. You literally were the GM of the Nets. Of your tenure here, you were the GM. You brung in Kyrie Irving. You brung in DeAndre Jordan. You brung in Steve Nash. The coach, you won fire. Everything they did was because of you. Every single move they did was catered to you. They brought in Harden. Because you're there. They didn't care about their future because they had you and Kyrie Irving. You were the GM, bro. Every move was tailored to you. He talked about in OKC when they lost Harden the first time. KD wasn't that inclined with the front office. You know, he was a star, a superstar coming up, but he didn't understand the business side of it when James left OKC. From my logic, now that he's older, he understands that. And now in Brooklyn, he has to make that his situation, which if I'm a GM and, I, and I'm an owner, I could find myself catering to Kevin Durant too. He's a top three player in the world and has been, I'm saying, KD has to take accountability for the shit that he did. You can't give them an ultimatum saying fire the coach and the GM when you made the decisions. This just goes back to the point of the Celtics having to be hesitant if they're going to pull this off because we don't know what makes KD happy and we don't know how to keep him happy. Again, you're in OKC, you're young, first chance you get you bounce to the team that eliminated you. Go to the Warriors, the best roster construction, the best management construction. You win two championships. The only reason you lose is because injuries to you, Klay Thompson. The only reason you lose. He leaves that situation. He leaves the perfect situation. Comes to the Nets. Is the GM. Chooses his coach. Now he wants the GM and the coach fired. That he brung there. He's a human, so of course he can have a change of heart. But he has but he hasn't shown any accountability here. That okay, I made that wrong move. I brought Steve Nash here. In hindsight, I thought it was the right idea. And still, with all that being said, I'm still not fully off the ledge of trading for KD. Because he's Kevin Durant. Because he's Kevin Durant. If this works, if this works for two years, that's two championships. That's 20. That's 19 championships. If he comes here for two years at his peak and things work. If he leaves after that, in my opinion, it's worth it. But the only reason the Celtics make this trade is the fear that Jalen Brown won't resign. That is the only reason. And there are some talks about him feeling disrespected by trade rumors. To me, I wouldn't be disrespected if, you know, I'm at trade rumors for KD, but he's built a legacy and a brand in Boston. His shops, the things he's doing in the community, like, and his teammates aren't doing a great job of making him feel like he's a part of the Celtics. Everybody knows it, but Grant Tatum, I just like, oh, it's a business, you know, I have no control. Tatum has control over that. They asked Tatum in a press conference, and he's like, you know, it's a business. I don't really have control over it. Jason Tatum has control over any trade that happens with the Celtics. Full control. Do you honestly think if he goes up to Brad Owick and says, hey, I don't want Jalen Brown traded, you think they're going to trade Jalen Brown? No. Because their franchise player just said they don't want him traded. So in that aspect, I cannot believe the shit that Tatum says. Now, Grant... I believe he has no control over it because he's a role player. You know, he's a great guy. You know, he doesn't have that type of say. Tatum certainly had that type of say. Just like the Nets cater to KD, the Celtics are going to do the same thing. Or they run the risk of losing Tatum. So that's all I have to say. All in all, it's not an on court issue with KD. 
it's really not the only issue of course is time in the championship window will be shorter with kd but i think the championship window will be more prevalent if we had kd you know we're legit contenders now but with kd maybe losing some death hurts but with kd i think we're overwhelming favorites but it's just he's too unpredictable he's too unpredictable you just you, you don't know what makes him happy is it winning if it was he would still be in golden state right now maybe he's at a different point of his life different point in his career maybe he changes but you never know so this is nick guys before we sign before i sign out please leave a like subscribe share to any and everyone that you can i'll be back with another video i'll be dropping articles during the season i cannot wait this is the dead period of the off season right now and i know people are tired of talking about kd so i can't wait for some news to come out so I can talk to y'all again. This is Nick. Peace.